up, welcome back to Epic Tavern. My name is Usser. We're gonna dive in. They've had plenty of updates since the last time I played it. I like to come back every once in a while just to see, because it's still in early access, just to see what's going on, what's different. I actually have a lot of fun in this game. It's um definitely very interesting. So, oh my god, quests available. Um, so they've changed things. A MacGuffin hunt. Oh uh, boy. Um, let's see. Lowest level. Let's just do six feet under. Uh, okay, so I want to kind of change things up a little bit. Let's take Lona and Bengar Skull Splitter, and then we'll take somebody who's up here at the top, like, um... Somebody with social. Oh, Catris does everything. We need one more social person. Ah, Brayson, perfect. I wanna, I wanna mix my party up so some of these lower level people can get in. And let's see, that's a fighting one. This one's definitely a social one. <laughs> I sent my good social people. We got a level five doctor, boink, boink, and someone good overall. Boom. Except it costs a lot of gold to send out some of these parties, but we're going to try and get everybody we can out there. We need social. So the 32 is the max difficulty. Let's see what I can get. No, clear party. Uh, return to quest list. That should be good. Go forth. I like how it's not just one quest anymore. As long as you've got the money and the people, you can do as many quests as you want. Out of the hole. A hole has opened up in the middle of Milston. A pair of overgrown bugs have emerged to terrorize the locals. Wrangle up a crew for a bug hunt. Uh, there's nothing like the star of a new adventure. Set forth. Wow, redid the interface and everything. Um, here's past a trio of farmers sprinting in the opposite direction. That's probably not a good sign, Katrina says. They get 40 XP. Wow. Brayson is starving. Brayson's no longer starving. Huh. Uh, the heroes pick up the pace as the sound of the battle rages ahead. They round a bend and see a terrified guard doing battle with an insect the size of a small horse. Yeah, two other guards lie rigid on the ground, victims of the paralytic poison of the bug's tail. I hate my job, Ilona mutters under her breath as they rush to engage. All right, do it. Ow. Ow. How? Oh. Oh, I have to select their actions. All right, let's do a uh, balanced. B Boing. Balanced. Oh, fail. Balanced. Oh, yeah! Heroic crit! Um, precise. Oh, yes. Easily take care of it. Um, Lona narrowly avoids a strike from the bug's prehensile tail while dragging a paralyzed guard to safety. With the help of the one remaining guard, the heroes cut down the giant critter, but the battle is just beginning. Wait, what? They charge toward the burrow of the hole near the stables. The ground beneath them begins to shake. Uh-oh, Lona says. Moments before the stables and half a city bot collapse into the tunnels below with a thunderous crash, leaving a giant crater behind. We didn't do it! Heroes to me, yells Milston's chief medic, Alwyn Klee, yanking a paralyzed child from a bug's grasp. Moments before another pair of critters crest the crater's edge. Anyone that they carry into those tunnels will be lost forever. Let none pass. Okay, let's do... Ooh, precise is not great, but whatever. Haha. Precise. I want that chance up. I don't want to fucking fail like that. Ooh. Ugh. Oh, we failed! Oh! Here's attack bugs that are carrying paralyzed town folks, so saving several locals, but losing far more in the battle. Alwyn uh, Klee hauls several paralyzed guards on a cart for treatment. Milston survivors will remember your failure. <gasps> Whoops! 
form a peri perimeter around the lip barks Knight Commander Artemis Boonwright. Upon arriving at the scene, I need volunteers for a strike force to explore these tunnels. All the knights' hands go up, as does Bengar's. Grayson shoots the weapon master a look as uh, Bo Bornwright calls them forward. Oh, come on, guys. Subtlety. I need intel to determine our next course of action, he explains to the heroes while opening a small chest full of potions. These will allow you dark vision and render you undetectable to every sense we know of. If you're still in there when the effect wears off, may the gods help you. A okay, precise fucking fail? Or go ahead and be aggressive. I need it. Oh, thank goodness. After wafing the potions, the party climbs down into the crater and maneuvers past the bugs undetected on their way into the tunnels. So far, so good. Oh, goody. Holding hands so they don't lose track of each other, the invisible party continues into an underground chamber where a cluster of dog-sized spiders skitter about. Heroes slowly advance, hoping to sneak across undetected. Give me this precise stuff. Okay, I passed. Cool. Oh, you can be aggressive with your one. The invisible heroes are forced to let go of one another and separately make their way through the maze of spiders. Catrice has a mild panic attack, but manages to keep her cool, and the party reunites on the far side of the chamber. Up ahead, the heroes spot a pulsating egg sac in the, that fills every inch of the tunnel. Brayson clamps her hand over her mouth to stifle a scream of horror, then notices she can see her hand. The potion's effects are wearing off. That's bad. Okay, the invisibility faltering, the heroes break into a mad dash for the crater as the tunnels around them burst into life and bugs take up the pursuit. Be precise, be effective. Fucking Catris, do something! There we go, we win. Holy shit! Catris, you are not pulling your weight. Uh, Brayson carves a path through the bugs and the heroes burst out of the tunnel and into the crater. Commander Artemis Bornwright helps pull them out of the pit and his soldiers covering their escape. Lona patches up their newest batch of wounds and the heroes head home to plan their next move. Yes, head home. Leave the bugs, leave the crater, everything else. Let's go home. The party returns. Um, you guys can enter the tavern. Success. Look at all that experience. How much money did we earn? Uh, none. Yeah, I should not have to pay more money for them to go out and finish the job. Okay. Try not to burn the place down while we're gone, Regina says as they exit the tavern. Make camp. Okay. Next day. What? We're just gonna camp out, right outside. Whatever. Okay, so I have some people that I could use a little bit of healing on, but it's not that big a deal. Are there any rivals now? No, that's still coming soon. Okay, manage goods. I think we're okay as far as meals and drinks, so that's good. That's good. We do not have any money, so I might as well just go to opening the doors and let's start feeding people! New patron! Hello, new patron! Ariel Nightbloom. Okay, how would you like some food? Uh, really? Woohoo! Hi! Ramsey Volk. Hey, I wanted to talk to you. Okay. New quest! Upsetting the apple cart. That's a level three. Awesome! Okay, thank you for that. Hello, new patron! Oh shit, there was somebody... Oh, God. Serve the item. Oink, new patron. Uh, 75%. I guess since I can't click on them, I won't click on them. Uh, 55%. Yuck. 
But we made some money. Hi. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Mother Winter's Wild Ride. Hmm. I spent my coi last coins playing dice. Uh, sure. Oh. Wait, so they're not gonna pay. I don't... No. Pay! You motherfuckers need to pay. Oh my god. Nobody has any money. I'm not making money because they don't have any. What do you got? Oh, no. I've got a full roster. Sorry. Yeah, a lot of these people didn't come with weapons, so I didn't give them one because it's not like I could buy weapons somewhere. So, okay. Do I have armor? Fuck yeah, I do. Why wouldn't I have armor? Leader quest I don't need to see. Let's do this level three, upsetting the apple cart. So I need a good mix of people, but I definitely need the green. Okay, there we go. Except Sally forth Upsetting the apple cart. Any simpleton can swing a blade, but the art of thievery requires a special touch. If you have any such adventures in your employ, I have work available. Wow, we're gonna go rob them. Okay. Uh I have this strange feeling of dread. I haven't felt this way since my last day of adventuring party all died. It's probably nothing. Don't do that. Can't just go trusting everyone who says they know how to empty a stranger's pocket. Here's a simple test for you. Steal an apple from the farm stand. I'll watch. Boom! We win! Oh my god, we won big. While Brayson pesters farmer Rowan Harper with questions about the optimal diet for a con artist, Murgle pockets an apple unseen and walks away. Woohoo! As the old Dragon's Blade Tavern appears in the distance, Alona sighs. I feel like I could sleep for a week. Grayson raises a brow. Why? It's not like you did anything out there. Very true! And all we did was steal an apple! Come on! A dull chest. Hey, cool! 43 gold! Awesome! You must finish by dividing loot amongst your party. How, 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 how? That's fine, even split. Oh, I gotta do it among the actual people. They get an even share. There we go. That's what I want, is even shares amongst the people. Okay, here we go. Party breaks camp. My cat is stuck up a tree, please help, a young girl says to the party, rushing to meet them. That's not really our style, Regina says. Oh, thank you, the girl cries, running to the tree. Um, that, that's, okay, whatever, we got it, boom. Just do precises. Continue! How far are we going? Les Leslie, an old friend of Regina, hails the party from afar as they travel along their path. After exchanging pleasantries, Les delves into details regarding his health problems for nearly an hour while Regina listens politely. Beginning to lose his patience, Volog decides to intervene. Oh, come on. Yes, good. Precise works. Oink, we're getting some crits in there. Look says, oh, Regina, did you mention to your friend about that horrible case of netherpox you contracted while wrestling a beholder last week? Les Blanche is white as a ghost and excuses himself, hurrying away. Regina chides Vulug for not rescuing her sooner. All right, we're getting there. Holy shit, 40 miles left to go? Wow. The makeshift medical tent, a blood-soaked Alwyn Clee from the Milston Infirmary, assesses newly arrived patients. Thank the gods, Alwyn says upon seeing the heroes. I have a pair of amputations to do. Make yourself useful and help the shaman who got impaled by a stinger. Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Aggressive! Yes! Oh, it worked! Hold still, I got this, Klager says, expertly extracting the giant stinger from the shaman's back. May the spirits protect you, brave heroes. The shaman says a short while later, uttering an incantation. Gain protection, physical. Ooh, good, so if we attack something. Large crack splits the road ahead, creating a 10-foot gap across. Regina cackles and breaks into a sprint. Last one across is a bug lover. The others run after her toward the rift ahead. Oh boy. Give me, 
Uh, you can be aggressive with your whole one. Woohoo! Heroic from one to five. Okay, just precise. There we go. Grunson gained one level in acrobatics. Grunson. Gina and Grunson sprint side by side simultaneously, leaping over the gap in a race too close to call. As my mentor used to say, Ty goes to the lamp pirate, Regina says, breaking into a thoroughly inappropriate victory dance. <laughs> Alright. Enormous wing bug swoops down from above and snatches Clegor off the ground. Help the Dr. Yells! Precise attacking! Boom, it's dead! Precise! Boom, it's double dead! Boom, it's triple dead! It's fucking wrecked! Gina grabs the doctor's leg and yanks him away from the giant bug. Yeah, you better run, Clegger yells as the bug at the bug as it flies away in search of easier prey. So we didn't actually kill anything. Ooh, hey. Uh, Regina and Volug argue over how to set up the tent. In the end, Regina gets her way, and the tactician goes off to sulk by himself. Make camp. It's gonna take us a day to finish this quest and start making our way back and then another day to get back. Wow. Hell of a quest. Morgaritas. Morgaritas. That's amazing. Uh, chicken wings, fine, but, uh, we got more barbecued rat in stock. There we go. Uh, it used to be that you could do different rooms, and I'm trying to figure out where that's at. Because you used to be able to build, like, the infirmary and the, the... Huh. I'm almost to level 10 for my reputation, so that's good. Let's see if I have a better time, because there's a whole bunch of broke people and a whole bunch of people who didn't want to do shit. Drusilla Marrow Sucker. Uh, sorry. Didn't realize. I thought you were giving me a quest. Yolanda. Serve item. Wow, that's it? Okay, no reputation bonus for that shit. Not getting mu much reputation bonus. I'm not getting very big things. Oh, hey! Tell me more about the quest. Cloak and Dagger! Okay, so we have to do something else for Mr. Steely Steely. What is this? Oh, choose a path! Nothing like good burger and no critter short of a dragon yields more meat than a frost mammoth. Question is, do you have a crew capable of taking down one of the brutes? Okay. Okay, lowest level. Let's go ahead and do the cloak and dagger one. Mergle will pretty much guarantee a victory. We'll take Ugarim. Who's the lowest level? These two are. There. Uh, we don't have good social, but everything else is overpowered. So... Go forth for a new adventure! Chapter 3. Okay. Let's go. Is it too late to back out? Mur Murgle asks sheepishly. Yep, Alona says, hurrying her along. Set forth! It's not like we have that far to go. Quit your whining. Ramsey says Gorn doesn't even lock his doors because everyone knows he's a psycho who would kill anyone who robbed him. Lona says as they scope out the butcher shop. He seemed to think that would make me feel better. Yeah, precise. Aggressive! Fail, whatever. Precise? Oh, fuck, fail! Precise. Hey, we did it! We're not gonna die! Lona slips into Gordon's butcher shop while Dugarim stands look out. The shaman nervously pushes aside an unidentifiable animal torso hanging from a hook and finds the ever-sharp dagger behind the counter, as promised. Home at last, Murgle sighs. I didn't expect to die, but I'm still relieved I didn't. Enter the tavern! So we got the ever-sharp dagger? Do, do we get to keep that? Even split? Oh, there is no money. So these guys still don't have any money to buy shit at my tavern. Wow. Okay. Squirrels chase each other through the underbrush as the heroes pack up camp. 
They've got it made, Grunson says. No responsibility or dragons to slay. They just run around and play all day without a care in the world until something bigger eats them. On second thought, yeah, break camp. We're there. Luster Cap gives us you tour. The rescued nethering netherling claims, bouncing around like a lunatic as they approach the workshop. Luster Cap knows his all the secrets is come, come. Luster Cap leads the party into a bustling workshop where all around imp like netherlings are hard at work crafting toys with their nimble little claws. Is this Santa's workshop? Boom, we just won. Okay, heroic. Awesome. Creatures attacked our realm. A powerful voice booms directly into Clegor's mind. They must be destroyed! Kill the netherings! Kill them all now! Clegor looks around confusedly for the source of the failed attempt at magical compulsion, but finds nothing. Watch your step, friendses, Flustercap says as they traverse a narrow catwalk looking down at the workshop. Aggressive. Yeah! Heroic crit! Aggressive! Oh, we're so close. Don't fail. Don't fail. Don't fail. Whew. Catwalk creaks in protest at the show of weight... At the weight of the adventurers and the goods they recovered from the abominable snow ape's cave, but it holds and they proceed toward the tinkerer's office. This way, the excited netherling says, leading the heroes down a small side passage. He stops swirling around and affixing them with a deadly serious gaze. You are friendses, yes? Yeah, we're here, aren't we? Boom. Hell yeah, we are. We all succeeded. Even got a crit or two. Heroes assure the little monster that they are, in fact, super close friends, sending the netherling into a series of delighted flips. When it finally calms down enough to talk again, it presents them with a recipe for a new tavern drink. Netherling Nog. So we went to Santa's workshop, which is filled with netherlings. And we got eggnog, but their own version of it. Well, well, a jovial old wizard laughs as he sees the heroes are led into his office. The name's Wilbur Winterflame. I see you've met the Netherlings. Fascinating creatures left behind when the Ravenger 4 sealed the flaming gate. My magical essence permeates every fiber of this workshop and everything we create here. It takes energy to control their baser instincts, but less all the time as the influence of the Nether subsides. I hope one day to release them into society. That sounds like a bad idea. Precise, please. Boom! We win. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Aggressive! Fail. Yeah. Should be proud of what you've built here, Vuluk says. The toy maker chuckles. I don't know about all that. The Netherlings have been good friends to me, and I'm just trying to return the favor. That's why we created our Netherling on a string toy this year. To my... my... what is this? From inside a recovered crate, he pulls out a small craftsman's hammer that glows faintly with blue light. Regina res resists a brief, irrational urge to split the toy maker's head open upon seeing him heft the hammer. <laughs> yes, resist your urge. Uh, a volley of arrows peppers the ground in front of the party. Three elves peering from the tree line demand payment for trespassing. Eat shit. Boom! Way to go, Regina! Unaccustomed to surrendering to threats, the heroes instead charge at the trio, weapon slashing. The elves stagger back, suddenly regretting their choice of targets. Lulu cack cackles as the bandits beat a hasty retreat. Moving on. Holy shit, I've got a long way to get home. Party encounters a large cave. Kligor shouts into it and listens to the echo. The doctor spends the next several minutes playing with echoes before moving on. Oh boy. Uh, the trail rumbles beneath the heroes, loop back as the ground splits apart and a beetle the size of a horse bursts through. Oh, come on, Claygor yells, pulling himself to his feet. Uh... Boink. Oh, we got a crit, it's over. Oh, a heroic crit, it's even over, over, er. Boink. Yeah. Strategist of the group, Fulug, barks out orders for the heroes to surround the giant beetle. Harassed from multiple directions, the critter spins around in ineffectively until Klegor lands the killing shot with his Executioner Axe. Way to go, Klegor. Why does the doctor have an Executioner's Axe? I don't know. Bulu gained one level in strategy. Awesome. 
Help! A voice cries from ahead. The heroes rush toward the sound and see a pair of guards battling a scorpion the size of a horse. Why is everything the size of a horse? The size of a horse in effort to protect a cowering group of children. Get them out of here! A guard yells to the heroes. Yeah, let's hope we do it. Boom! We do! All the precise ones, yes. Flagor rushes to help the guard. Vulu crouches next to the oldest child. This is your moment to become a hero. I know you're afraid, but your friends need your help. Do you know how to get to Volridge? Good. Get your friends there as fast as the little ones can run. Don't stop until you arrive. The young girl nods through tears and leads her friends away. That was actually pretty good, Vulug. Uh, that was pretty decent of you. Man, we're getting lots of experience. The wind howls as a storm rolls in, bending trees and snapping branches. We need shelter, Clegor yells over the howling wind. Aggressive. Fail. Aggressive. Uh, precise. Yes. Teamwork and more cursing than strictly necessary. The party manages to set up the tents and wait out the storm. Yeah, except it's almost nighttime or daytime. Yep, we gotta set up camp. All right, make camp. Shit, it'll be the next day before they get back. I better get a lot of money for that. That that was a long ass quest. Level ten, gain one roster slot, plus five percent serve chance, plus one serve combo. Except they're all broke. Your heroes grow in power. Adventurer level up. Okay. Whoa. Hey. What? Uh, level up tip one of four. As your heroes adventure, gain experience to level up. You can guide their progress and influence where they specialize and improve their skills. Yeah, I know that. If you change your mind, you can use the minus point that have been assigned this turn. Uh, careful planning. You can guide the direction of your entire team, honing a highly tactical group of specialists, developing reliable and interchangeable general proficiencies, or whatever blend of the two best fits your play style. Uh, if your hero has any equipment which is granting bonus skill levels, these skills will display their levels in green. Skills which your hero only has because of equipment cannot be boosted by skill points. Over here you'll see the roster rank which gives you a quick overview of what skill sets your team is strong or weak in, as well as how well this hero stacks up against them. So. He's not great on attack, but he's really good here. Okay. That's cool. That gives you a way, yeah, like he needs to go up with melee weapons. Scouting sucks. And we'll do those two. Boom. Okay. There you go, dude. Now, does it just like auto do that? Because, you know, I see on the roster it's got two arrows pointing up, and that usually meant that you had to do. Uh, a level up, but I'm not seeing it. Normally they'd have like a plus next to their name. Hi, who are you? Ulath, a ranger. Level one. Combat, mind, and great survival. Oh, uh, you know what? Why don't we just go ahead and hire you? Okay, we have got a full roster now. Oh shit, I could have got Tisnis, who's a bard. Uh, sorry. It's not something you said. Okay. Serve item! Who's got money? Oh, we got lots of money. We've just got level two, so let's just start at the top. Um. So we need 32 of everything. Boink. Boink. That's got us nearly at 32 of everything. We need social and survival. Brayson's always good for that. Uh, survival. This won't quite do it, but he's a level one, and I really need to get him out there. Actually, we'll take Elona. Good. We're, we're plenty good. All right. <clears throat> Our crowded street, Catrice actually accidentally kicks over an elderly beggar's donation bowl. She heals after you, her curse, you paladin. Not much of a paladin if you're kicking over some poor elderly guy's donation bowl. A burly human woman berates her husband, a small, sullen man, as he attempts to fix the broken wheel of their wagon. Always the hero, Catra steps forward to intervene. Boom, we got it. 
Uh, hello, mate, Catra says, cheerfully diffusing the situation as she crouched to help the downtrodden fellow change the wheel. Together, they jury-rigged the wheel well enough to get them to the nearest village. The woman nods appreciatively at her husband. Never doubted you for a minute. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, the heroes fill Ignatius in on the situation and hand him piles and piles of notes they fear may be nonsense. The collector retrieves a monocle from his jacket pocket and affixes it while examining the notes. Magically encrypted, he says. Boink. Hey, we did it! That heroic roll really saved the day there, Bologna. Oh, I forgot to read it! Damn! Shit! Smoke rises above the treetops ahead, and the heroes pick up the pace. Breaking through the tree line, they spout, spot a hilltop overrun by lizardmen raiders. A trio of scouts spots the party and opens fire. Okay, so here we go. Let me read this one. Uh, lunacy, Ignatius says. He believed he could create a temporal bubble by destroying an epoch crystal while holding a lost menagerie artifact. He hoped to use this bubble to access the carnival undetected in its home dimension to rescue Isabella. I mean, it makes sense theoretically, and I do have an epic crystal in stock, but... Okay, that's... whatever. I guess that's what he was trying to do! Precise, 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 we win. Heroes return fire and take down the scouts before they can sound the alarm. There may be hostages, Catris cautions as they inch towards the keep. The heroes advance past the dead lizard men archers and approach the keep where they spot a dozen hostages bound and chained to a post. More than a score of lizard men are hard at work looting and haven't noticed the party yet. Okay, be precise. Be precise. Yes, a heroic. We win. Oh, another one. Uh oh. Okay. Grayson sneaks unseen to the captives and unties them after a quick trip to the armory. The hostages join the heroes in routing the lizard men and reclaiming the keep. On the commander's horse, they find a sizable treasure chest. Ooh, I want it! I want it! The road is long and hard, even though nothing's happening, says Alona. <laughs> uh, just saying, if we can convince the monsters to come here to get killed, we can save ourselves a lot of traveling, Brayson says. Yes, I agree. Do I even have money? Common chest, level 4. 32 gold, split evenly. They finally have some money, although 4 gold to their name is not enough for them to buy anything. Okay, finally coming back from Santa's workshop. We're almost home. Great camp. Heroes pass through a narrow alley in town and are pelted by a volley of rocks. Hey, fuck off! Gina looks up to see children fleeing. The land pirate scrambles after the young'uns and gives them a lecture on appropriate and inappropriate times to throw rocks. Boink, and we're home. Thank the gods. Be warned, anyone who gets between me and my bed is apt to get hurt. Yeah. All right. Achievement perfectionist. Wow. Hey, I got an achievement. I got Netherling Nog. A ton of experience. Level 3 chest. I haven't, I didn't get any money, though. This is all the money I got. Ooh. Wait, we got three of them. Oh, my God. It's payday. Nice. Even split. Boom. They get... They've each got 16 total. 64 gold for the tavern. Saving progress. That's exactly what I need. I need the progress to be saved. I mean, next time I go to do this, I'm going to totally forget. Oh, no, it says right there, out of stock. That's good, because I would totally forget if it didn't say that right there. I've got 911 gold in my coffers. That's awesome. Uh, Check in to the infirmary, because you're cursed? Wow. Okay. Anyway, that's back to Epic Tavern. I've noticed that they've done some things like the travel uh, UI is a bit different. Um, they, they've they changed things in the, the bar area where you can just stop serving at any time in case, like, you have no one else you can serve to. Uh, definitely putting things on the tab or, or giving them kind of a different item is new because... Honestly, that's never acceptable. You need to pay for your fucking food. 
Damn it. This is a tavern, it's not a charity. Anyway, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you can see whenever I upload new videos. Links in the description for Facebook, Twitter, and the game. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Catch you all in the next one. Bye!